Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to the Dr. G. Aspie Show. I'm Dr. G, and this is Dr. Melissa Miller. She's one of my good friends here at the practice, and she is a sleep specialist. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to kind of pick your brain a little bit. A lot of the Aspie guys and girls that I work with, as well as their parents, have a hard time falling asleep. So maybe you could share with the audience a few reasons why that is, and maybe some tips on how to get an Aspie to sleep, if not tonight, sometime this week. Absolutely. Cool. So what are, what are some reasons? So one of the reasons that kids might have a hard time falling asleep is that they don't have a good bedtime routine. The routine. They might not have mm -hmm. any routine at all, or the routine might be too stimulating. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of a bedtime routine is to really signal our body that it's time to go to sleep and we need enough time to calm down right. so that when you lay in bed, your mind isn't racing, and instead you can just give yourself over to sleep. Give yourself over to sleep. I love that phrase. Cool. The other reason that they might have a hard time sleeping is because of anxieties and fears. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about being in bed, it's quiet, it's calm, it's dark. It's kind of this breeding ground for anxieties and fears to be stirred up. Mm -hmm. And the last reason that uh, kids with Asperger's might have a hard time sleeping is biological. Right. That some of them just need less sleep mm -hmm. than others, and um, their minds race, and so they have a harder time shutting it off at night. That's that freight train brain. They just can't stop thinking. Yeah, my dad was like that. He only slept four or five hours a night. Wow. So Cool. So what are some practical tips, maybe five tips that parents could imp start implementing tonight? Great. So bedtime routine. Mm -hmm. And in the bedtime routine, I want two things. First, 90 minutes before bed is when I want the routine to start and mm -hmm. all technology off. I know Woo. it means all game, all video <laughs> games, television, mm -hmm. iPads, everything, especially things that have light that are really right. sensory, mm -hmm. um, needs to be off. And Got then it. also, in that, what I want in that bedtime routine is a hot bath. Mm -hmm. And when you get out of the bath and your body needs to cool down, that cooling effect actually makes you drowsy, and mm -hmm. so it just kind of sets you that. up for a good night of sleep. That makes sense. Cool. So the second thing that I think is important is having a little worry time. Worry time. Mm -hmm. Worry time. So if you can get like a little notebook and have them spend 15, 20 minutes a night mm -hmm. just writing down their worries. It's kind of a dumping ground for what's going on in their brains and right. they can just get everything down on paper and every night they know that they're going to have time to put everything out there. Makes a lot of sense. I like that. Second is, or third, third. Mm -hmm. we need to make sure that their room is sleep compatible. Okay. So uh, what that means is that it's really fun to have everything that you love in your bedroom all around you, but when mm -hmm. you're laying down at night, if you're looking at things that are really exciting, it's kind of hard to turn that brain off mm -hmm. and fall asleep. So you want the room dark, cool, and as non-stimulating as possible. Right. Cool. A noise machine is a really good mm -hmm. um help for falling asleep. It drowns out that noise, it's soothing, so it's just easier to shut off that brain and not have any anything stimul any noise stimulating. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then last is first thing in the morning. Right. So if we're helping them fall asleep well, we can't mm -hmm. always predict when they're going to fall asleep, but we can predict when they wake up. Right. If we really want to regulate their clock, we do it with light and dark. And mm -hmm. so first thing when they wake up, same time every day, light, light, light. That really helps the circadian rhythm get on schedule, and they might just fall asleep easier at night if they're waking up and being stimulated in the morning. I do exactly that every morning. Turn the light bulb on, shines in my eyes. It's painful, but it wakes me up. It's kind of weird. So routines, uh, hot bath, you've also got um, electronics off, mm -hmm. having a, a dark room free of distractions, white noise machine, and worry, uh, time. And worry time. That's right. That's awesome. Those are great tips. Well, I thanks, Dr. Miller. Yeah. Uh, but all my guests on the Dr. GSP show have to answer an important question. In this segment, we call Zombie Dave and Friends. Oh, this is Zombie Dave. How would you survive the zombie apocalypse? Well, I think my time in a zombie apocalypse would be short lived. <laughs> um, I would want to go out with a bang. Oh. And so I would, I would have like my big. Ending moment, guns, mm -hmm. ammo, fight, and then oh, I try wow. to take them all down. But I don't think I'd last too long. Yeah, I, I think you might. You have to be on the right team. And we, we were talking earlier that you would maybe spike them in the head with your boots. I would. So I've that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Trinity from the Matrix. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. I have a nice parting gift for you, which is very expensive. Very expensive. Always wanted one of them. Well, it's, I don't know what it is, but it's very expensive. And a nice bag, which is even more expensive, that is happy, and you can wear it and thank do you. things with it. Thank so there you go. So thank you, Dr. Miller. Thanks. 
Everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Dr. G. Aspie Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. F. Gaskill. You can like us on Facebook, Southeast Psych, and you can also visit us online at southeastpsych.com. Be sure to check out Dr. Miller's bio. And thanks again for tuning in, where Aspies are awesome. <laughs>